Okay, I'm just here with Aussie, what was it again? Aussie, Aussie Metal Detective. This is Leon and Shane. And Leon and Shane have got a, they're working on a show, but we've got an amazing find here. Now, can you tell me a bit, bit before we look at it? I haven't even seen it yet, so no, right. before Great. we look at it, uh, can you tell me about sort of how it was found? And, you know, a bit of information, a bit of background on it? Yeah, I'll add to the mystery, it's over a kilo in weight, it's solid, yeah. whatever it is. But Leon can sort of explain, you know, what we, when we found it first of all. Yeah, look, we, we have a background in telly, making TV is what we do, so our last gig was Blue Planet 2 for Sir David Attenborough. Oh, okay, yeah. And I know, like, you should never yeah. drop names. Yeah, yeah. Like but that. you just did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Within five seconds, <laughs> Elvis Presley told me that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, look, so we were working on a, a different documentary with the French government yeah. looking for scientific yeah. artefacts, actually, left behind almost two centuries yeah. ago. Yeah. And as such, we were working out uh, professional archaeological methods, how to how to find stuff, how to dig stuff up appropriately. How to use the metal detector. How to use the metal detector. Which is why we had uh, fairly, fairly, you know, simple ones uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. And we dug up a lot of beer cans, a lot of ring pulls, <laughs> as you do, and then within a space of about two weeks, really, this came to the surface. Yeah. So, come on, let's have a look at it. I'm okay. going to have a look at it. Okay. So, so, there we go. So, we've got to... We got it in a travel box here, but <laughs> this is the oldest Asian oh. artifact discovered in Australian history. It's wow. over one kilogram in weight. It's built in 24 karat gold applied with melted mercury in a pig bristle brush. Oh wow! It's been an object of worship for potentially centuries, somewhere between five and eight hundred years of age. Right. Wow. So it's it's bro is it bronze? A solid cast solid, bronze. Solid yeah. cast bronze. Yep. One point one kilo solid solid bronze. When Leon mentioned the lost work. wax yeah, method, sure. what they did, they had a statue carved out of wax. Yep. And then covered in fine clay. Yep. And then poured the bronze, melted the wax, and that replaced. Yeah. And then you then broke the clay away, and then that's what you see. Yeah, yeah. And look, but the detail in it, it's like amazing, the detail in the, in the, like that must have taken some work to get that wax mould to... Oh, yeah. What we were looking at was made at the same time that Kung Fu was being yeah. created. Yeah. Over 4,000 years ago, the technique. Yeah. So uh, Kung Fu is actually known as Wushu. The, the, the literal term Kung Fu actually yeah. translates as getting better with practice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the guys that made this, yeah. they had a lot of practice. Yeah. And they were the sort of blokes who'd make stuff for the imperial family. Yeah. So how this ended it up, tens of thousands of kilometers away from its home in, in China is that's 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 the actual treasure. Yeah. This is an amazing relic, but it's not the biggest treasure for Shane yeah. and I. We're about the mystery and the history. Yeah, yeah. So can you trace a lot of this stuff has got maker's marks on it. Has this got any maker's marks? Can you trace it back that far or well, there's, there's two stages to that. The first one's a metallurgist. Yeah. You know, a, 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 from the museum to have a look at it. And we had a, probably the best metallurgist in Australia have a look at it. Yeah. He determined it'd be buried for well over a hundred years. And he did that by the grains of sand that are under the the armpit there, you can see that the colour of the grains of sand have changed over time. They, they do it at a certain rate and they just change from a, an, an orange to a green. He'd done uh, Egyptian artefacts and he sort of told us that, yeah, three grains? Probably over 150 years this has been buried. Now, the other thing is the art side of it. Sorry to pull you up there, brother. So, don't want to get scientific on your own because we were well and truly out of our lab talking to this bloke. He's the king of rust in yeah, Australia. Yeah, yeah. So, king of rust. Well, he's the order of an Australia winner. Oh, you really? know? And we, we only got the Guernsey to go and see him because he thought that we were frauds. Yeah. So he wanted to prove that we were wrong. Yeah. And from the moment that he saw that, he crossed the room at a rate of knots and spent the next two hours in absolute awe of what it was. Now what Shane was talking about was essentially rust, for lack of a better term. When you bury something, it goes through very specific chemical reactions with the surrounding soil. Yep. So the silica sands that were close to that actually bonded with the copper that's in there. So the copper sulfate you can see getting into the silica. And I don't want to bore you to tears, but essentially he has studied a lot of Egyptian bronzes. And the Egyptian bronzes have one, two, three grains of sand where the copper silicate and the copper is bonded with the silicon. 
If that gave those objects the age of 3,000 years. Yeah, okay. Ours is one, one and a half grains of sand deep. Okay. So now we're not saying it's you know, 1,500 years. Yeah. The truth of the matter is that a scientist can only tell you so much. This has exactly. now become an art history mystery. Yeah, yeah. So we now have to go to China. I love the rhyme I'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always looking for a tagline. But no, we have to go to China now, actually, and speak with the descendants of the original blokes that made this, the Kung Fu masters, if you like. Yeah. That's that's awesome. We're pretty stoked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the to try and trace the background of it. That's the, 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 the tracing the metal, yeah. if you like. Yeah. So, is there any hall marks on it, or was there any maker's mark at all on it? So, yeah. So you, you don't know with these sort of pieces. The metallurgist, here, you know, Dr. Ian McLeod, thought he saw script writing on the back. Yeah, but he wasn't 100% sure. So okay. that's something that we'll find out once we get once we get to take, take a little, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 But the amazing thing too is under his feet he's got two holes. He would have originally stood on a double lotus leaf base, circular base. Oh, well, made it made, yeah, made out, out, of, out of bronze, bronze out of bronze, bronze as well. As well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yet to be found. That may be in the location. The other interesting thing is it's baby Buddha when he reached his moment of enlightenment. So he then pointed a finger, index finger yep. to the sky, another one to the ground and said, the heaven and the earth, I am the enlightened one. He's missing his fingers and they haven't broken off. Okay. It's cast without fingers, which means that then so, a finger was inserted. So we've been sort of told perhaps jade, oh, and perhaps oh, diamond, yeah. perhaps ruby. So we're actually now doing an archaeological dig to try and find those spot, fingers. To find that, one yeah. thing a metal detector yeah, 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 those little tiny things. Yeah, 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 that's the incredible. day you invent that metal detector, yeah, sign yeah, me up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what's the what's the next step with Baby Buddha? Baby Buddha, well, it will hopefully come to China. Yeah. You know, with us. The next step, fairly simply, is the Aussie metal detectives. Uh, uh, pimp ourselves out. Yeah, no, no, pimp yourself out. No, I'm more than happy with that. That's so, basically yeah, yeah. what it's about. We yeah, cool. have subsequently no, discovered that in the metal detecting community there's some incredible bloody yarns. Yeah, yeah, there, really there is some incredible And what they do is it. tell the story of Australia. Yeah. And it's a story that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. So the next step with Buddha yeah. is we're going to unravel that story. We are going to China um, to meet those artists. But more so than that, we're actually looking for people who have these yarns, yeah. who have these yeah. artifacts, who want to talk to us yeah. and have our research teams delve into them so yeah. that we can get a better understanding of how we got to this yeah. pretty awesome place where Australia is right now. Yeah. So, okay, that, I, that was something I didn't realise. So how do they get in contact? If someone's out there yep. that's got a, an amazing artifact or what they think is an amazing artifact, how do they get in contact with you? So we're three weeks away from actually going into, into distribution. Okay. Yep. So, and, and at that stage, we'll do all the normal social media yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it'll yeah. be Aussie Metal yeah. Detectives. If anyone wants to jump the gun, it's at the moment it's Finn Films, F I N, yeah. okay. named after Shane's yeah. son. And when, when this video comes out, right here, I'll put a. Uh, I'll put, I'll put a, I'll oh, put a web yeah. a link for yeah, people yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. contact yeah. you through sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be great. And what Leon and I say is, this is classified as treasure, it's finding yeah. treasure, but yep. the true treasure behind an item like this is the story. It's always the story. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. That's, and this this is, opens up that door to be able to tell that story. Ex then. Exactly. And, and it can, a, a story can be as simple as, how does a fairly common ladies broke get in the middle of nowhere, Hmm. On the goal field. What, what, yeah. what, you know, that's yeah. a very simple story. Yeah. It happens all the time, but there's a big, big story behind that. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've got some great yarns to tell. Yeah. There's, there's one about the Australian connection to the American Civil War, you yeah. know, and it ends you know, with us investigating explosive bird poop. Explosive bird poop? I don't know if you knew that. Jeez, the, you'll the, we'll have to watch for that one. But the yeah. cannons up here getting fired at the Eureka yeah. Stockade, yeah. they're fired with a type of explosive bird oh, really? poop. So, yeah. you know, these, these, these paths that we go down, there's tangents, my yeah. friend. There's, there's, <laughs> many a bloody, there's many a rum drunk while we're investigating. Yeah. But they're great yarns. Yeah, exactly. And they're Australian yarns. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of Aussie pride, that's what yeah. these are about. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for the chat. No, no worries. Pleasure to meet you, man. So easy. No, no worries. worries. Thanks, Ben. No worries. <laughs> Look at that, Ed! <laughs> She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy.